This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's morning worship. After what has been a much wetter, greyer week than we've been used to, but whatever the weather, I hope that we will find much to praise God for this morning. Of course, we don't deny the difficult circumstances that we face, but instead we can hold on to the goodness of God in every circumstance. So that's what we're going to do this morning. The links for the songs that we'll be singing throughout our service should be available to you somewhere below this video. And if you like, you might want to open those up in a new tab or new window from the start so that they're ready for you to navigate to during the service. And any prayers or responses that you need will just come up on the screen. So I'm going to pray for us as we begin. And then we'll go straight on to our first hymn of praise. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come to worship you this morning, you would give us hearts that are ready to sing and speak of your goodness. Please show us more of yourself this morning and lift our eyes and our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, as well as praising God, part of our offering of worship is to come back to God and to recognise the ways that we have wandered off and forgotten him, perhaps like lost sheep. The Bible tells us we all, like sheep, have gone astray, each turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So trusting in Jesus' death, for our forgiveness, we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Helen is going to bring us our first reading, which comes from Acts. I'm reading from Acts 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm set for today is Psalm 23. So for our second song, we're going to sing together the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. So do pause this video and find our second song. Our Gospel reading today will be read for us by Paul and then Elaine is going to bring us our sermon. A reading from John chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, 
and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. In the last two verses of our Gospel reading today, it is revealed, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus says that he is the gate. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the way. An abundant life. What's that? What does that conjure up in your mind? Should we think of a big house? A nice car? Lots of money to spend? Luxury holidays, maybe lavish food and drink. Or maybe it should make us think of a loving family, lots of friends, much happiness and plenty of laughter. When we welcomed in 2020 on New Year's Eve, I think some of us might have been hoping for and wish him many a healthy and happy new year. But none of us could have imagined that in a few weeks, thousands of people would get ill and many thousands of people would die in a global pandemic that we now find ourselves living through. I am, and I know family and friends who are also in a process of re-evaluating our lives, considering what's really important. Life has changed for us all. What we have and what we are experiencing has changed us. We, I don't think, will ever be the same. For us as believers in Jesus, when we enter the gate, when we choose to believe in Jesus, we are saved to be with him for eternity. In verse 10, Jesus says, The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy and I think, sadly, that is, is, is exactly what the coronavirus is capable of. But Jesus continues to say in this verse, I came that we may have life and have it abundantly. It is tragic that so many people have lost their lives. How can we ever move on? 
and have life and have it abundantly. I think in these recent weeks, we've had a glimpse of seeing things differently. Abundance is not something we get. It's a way of living and being. The abundant life is not about quantity, wealth, success, approval, popularity, security, being number one, or any of the other things that we might have thought were important. No, the abundant life is touching and living the divine life. It's a quality, not a quantity. It's about meaning, integrity, purpose, creativity, relationship and wholeness. It should not add pain. Abundant life should only add to the life of others in the world. Then, in that way, we also receive. So let us follow the way of Jesus the shepherd. Through the gate to everlasting life. A life in the pasture of an eternity of abundant life that is everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Elaine. As we continue to reflect on those words and let them sink into our hearts, Lizzie is going to lead us in a time of prayer. Prayer. Radiant Lord of glory, source of light and life, you shine your penetrating rays throughout all creation and catch us in your glow, refusing to let us hide from your love. May we learn to reflect your generosity, offering a lamp of hope to our neighbours as we climb hand in hand with them on the journey towards a city set on a hill, the glorious city of God, where your welcoming grace is made visible to all. We pray to you now, Lord, who alone makes us dwell in safety. When I say, Lord, hear us, the response is, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that we may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors and nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, Hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, and we name them to you now, Lord, in our hearts. That they may know your comfort and peace, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For charities around the world, like Open Doors, who work tirelessly for the marginalised in Iraq, where Christians and other minority groups feel they are being unfairly treated by the new constitution and are speaking up for equality and coexistence. 
we pray that the voice of justice will be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Barnabas Fund's much needed assistance in East Africa, parts of the Middle East and Pakistan, where a plague of locusts has destroyed crops and pastures, leaving the local farmers and people destitute. And if you're Christian, discriminated against and persecuted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For refugees in camps in the Middle East, Europe and asylum seekers, that aid agencies can get the necessary medicines, food and fresh water to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. A closing prayer. Written by Catherine A.M. Kelly. Give me a sight, O Saviour, of your wondrous love to me, of the love that brought you down to earth to die on Calvary. Was it the nails, O Saviour, that bound you to the tree? No, it was your everlasting love, your love for me, for me. Oh, wonders of all wonders, that through your death for me, my open sins, my secret sins, can all forgiven be. Then melt my heart, O oh Saviour, bend me, yes, break me down, until I own you conqueror and Lord and sovereign crown. Oh, make me understand it, help me to take it in, what it meant to you, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray together as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final song is a moving hymn with a very powerful story behind it. If you haven't come across Horatio Spafford, do look him up. Suffice to say that he went through the most difficult of circumstances and suffered so much, but was able to look to God and find true confidence in him. So let's pause and sing together, When Peace Like a River. Well, it's been wonderful to worship with you this morning. A big thank you to everyone who's been involved. And a special thank you to Paul and Marie who've provided the bells for us. It's wonderful to hear them as we miss our church buildings and our bell towers. Just one notice to give you today, and that is to say that it's Vocation Sunday today. Now, it might be that in this particular period, you've had a chance to think a little bit more than usual about how God might be calling you to serve in the world or in the church. 
And if you'd like to reflect and pray over those sorts of questions, our diocese has produced a really lovely set of resources, videos with personal stories, songs, prayers, and questions to think about, just to use at your own pace. There's a link to find those resources on our websites and on Facebook. So why not carve out time, perhaps today or later this week, to ask God what he might be calling you to in this unusual time of life? Well, let's pray a final prayer, and then we'll share the words of the grace together. Great God, you are one God, and you bring together what is scattered and mend what is broken. Unite us with the scattered peoples of the earth, that we may be one family of your children. Bind up all our wounds and heal us in spirit, that we may be renewed as disciples of Jesus Christ, our Master and our Saviour. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.